did a great job of uh, hosting this beautiful event. Uh, so um, can we jump into this problem? So, uh, so before I start, let me say that this is a not that old a problem. This problem was formally posed in 2008, but since then it has become reasonably big in this online uh, algorithm world. Uh, it has some major progresses that I would like to touch upon, but still it is not yet done. I mean, the conjecture is far from you know, what we have ever to see. Uh, so I will, I will kind of split my talk into two halves. Uh, maybe not 50 50, but uh, so first one I will try to extend the problem where I will really go um, slow and high level. Uh, and the second part I will try to go into the technical details as much as I can. So to start with, let's start with a toy problem. So I have an old car that I want to sell. Okay. Now, uh, I get beat up. Somebody comes and looks at my car and says that that person is willing to give me two lakh rupees. Now at this point, I can do two things. Either I can take that bid and sell that car to that person and I get two lakhs and I don't have the car anymore. Or I can tell that no, I will not sell it to you. In that case, that person goes off and there is no chance of I managing to catch hold of that guy again in future. So say I decide not to pay this person. Okay. Next meter comes, say one lakh, I can say no. And somebody comes 1.5, I say no. Somebody 1.25, no. At this point there I may be getting a bit uh, tense. So I get someone who is 1.75, which is less than what the initial person had offered, but by the time might might want to just say okay, fine. And it so happened that I don't know that the next person who was there in the line was willing to come and give me 2.25. So in this case, what should be the strategy that I should follow to sell this car? So, um, yeah. so there are different assumptions that are done in this uh, particular problem. So the first problem is that, uh, first assumption that one can do is are the bids coming in an adversary way or are they coming from some distribution? Some known distribution are they coming from? But we have to decide to which model we want to solve. The second one is, uh, is the knowledge of the bids known to the seller? In, is the distribution from which it is drawn is it known to the seller or not? And third part is, do the buyers come in a particular order, adversarial order, or do they come in a random order? Okay. So these are the kind of the standard three assumptions that we need to sort out. And uh, so there are three different approaches that one can think of. The first one is this pessimistic assumption. This is the case in which the everything is adversarial. The bids that decided adversarially, the ordering in which it comes in adversarially. And it is not too hard to convince yourself that in this case, whatever algorithm you come, come up with, there is an adversarial way of producing the bids and the ordering that you don't expect the expected return. I mean, you are assuming it is a random effect, right? So the expected return is not more than 1 by n of the best offline thing that I could have done. I mean, if I had known the, all the bits in advance, what would I have done? Compared to that, what my algorithm would do when it doesn't know the bits in advance. It's not hard to say that this is the best thing. So we know the number of bits okay. Let's start with that. Okay. I mean, yeah, let's, let's assume all four because then we know the number of bits. The next assumption is the most optimistic assumption that the bits that are drawn from a distribution and the bidders come in a random order, not an adversary. So in some there is no adversary in there. The only adversary is in the choice of the distribution, which also is known to the uh, seller. In this case, it's again not too hard to convince yourself that there is a strategy in which you can get almost uh, I mean, 
a pretty good grid. So you can go to half of the best bit uh, that you can think of. Okay, the expected return will be at least half of the best bit. Now, these two are not the assumptions that we are interested in. What we are interested in is the third or middle part. The bits are chosen by the adversary. Uh, that not run from the return model distribution, they are just adversarial chosen. But the bidder come in a random model. Okay. In that case, what can you do? So this is the what is known as can you see this color? It's called the you know, it's a secretary problem. It's called the secretary problem. And uh, so before I go into this generalization of this particular problem, let me tell you a very simple algorithm for this secretary problem. Okay. So okay, the formally writing it, so you have some set of bits b1 to bn and the bits are chosen uh, adversarially but if they come in random order and they come in online fashion that means once the bit comes at that time you decide either to sell it or not. If you don't sell it, the bidder goes off and you lose that bidder forever. And if you sell it, then that's the end of that game and that's the, the returning game. Okay. So as soon as you see BI, you either reject or select and um, if you reject then uh, that you cannot select it later and you select. And what is the goal? The goal is to maximize the expected return by the max of the bits. The max of the bits is of course the offline optimum. Like if I knew exactly what the best bit, then I could have come back. So here is very simple okay. I don't, so I say I know n. Okay. If I know n, well again, as you show it I know n. That's not a big assumption. I mean, believe me, that can be. Uh, I don't know. So if you know n, the first n over 2 bidders, I have already determined that I will not give it to them. But I record what are the bits. And I record what the maximum value of those set of bidders are. Now, for the second half of the set of bidders, so bidders from b n over 2 plus 1 to n, okay? As soon as I see a bidder who is bigger than C, I accept that bidder, sell, sell my card to that person. Now, since the bids are randomly ordered, so with probability one fourth, the highest bidder among the whole list is in the second half, and the second highest bidder is in the first half. Right? So it is not hard to see that in that case, my C will be the second highest bidder and in that case I would have picked up the highest bidder. Right? So my expected returns, I mean even if we forget any all other returns, uh, all other possible things, but at least for with that much amount of guarantee we can say that the expected return will be at least more than one fourth of the maximum rate. Yeah, so if you don't, if you are nothing is there, you see that you activate after the last one and I assume that you return will be close to zero. So I am not going to have to take that into account. Okay. So this is, uh, okay, I think, uh, so the optimum, but this is like a very old problem. Uh, for 1963, it proves that the complete ratio is 1 over E, which is basically the best fraction that you can put there. Instead of 1 over 4, how can you improve it? Okay. So this is the secondary problem. So now, one can imagine that a generalization of the secondary problem is that I have not one card but five cards. Right? And I want to sell this card. And I have the bits and I want to sell the bits. Uh, tell the five cards to the card. So that is one of the generalizations. But there is one more generalization, and uh, so it's 
Uh, let me take a third pro 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 problem, a pro example. It's not the best of the examples, but still. Say I am a travel agent. Okay? And I have uh, managed to book some tickets that I want to sell to the customers. Okay? So I have booked some um, 10 night to London and 26 in some flight, uh, London to Paris, five weeks, and so on and so forth. Now, when the bids are coming, say I'm going kind to of bring a big kind of stuff, the bids can be bit complicated than just a simple one direction flight. It can be something like a person wants to go from Chennai to London or London to Mumbai for $300. What it means that I should have given, I should give, I mean, give them one ticket from here and one ticket from whatever, London to Mumbai, and that should be. Right? So, in fact, the bid can be a combination of the stuff. Of this set of customers. Of so at this point, I can decide. Okay, no, no, this is too less. I can, I don't want to sell it. Then somebody comes out and says, Okay, I want just London to Paris. So I said, Okay, I just sell it. And I keep on going. And say I am here. Okay. So in that case, I have uh, sold my Mumbai, Paris, New York flight two times for. Uh, 700 and 800 dollars. Now someone comes and asks me a London, Paris, New York flight. The problem is that here, uh, look at this Paris to New York flight. I had only two. I had managed to sell them. Right? So I cannot sell this one. The main problem is that these three, this one, this one, and this one, are kind of not independent. I, if I sell this one and this one, I will not be able to sell this one, and so on. Right? So in this case, I have to say no. And even though this this uh, bid is high, I have to say no. Okay. So what is should be strategy for this kind of structure? So just try to um, uh, I mean to realize that this is not same as having five stars and selling them. It's a bit more structured here, right? There is a... Uh, so let me formally define it. The formal definition... Uh, so here I will give you two different definitions. First in this slide, it's in the language of Mantroid, and then I will talk about it in the language of vector spaces. So if you are more comfortable with vector spaces, just wait for a couple more slides and you will get the vector spaces definition. So in the sense of Mantroid, the idea that you have a universe, which say in this case looks at all the possible itineraries and the set of bits. Okay? And you have this various set of independent sets, the various collection of tickets that I think might be able to sell. And what are the bits coming? So bits are the various elements of the matrix with the individual bits. And I, I do it, I have to sell it in this online fashion, just like I did it for the Selling one card. Uh, and the goal is that I can only sell, or I can only uh, select or say whatever you want to say, this set of UIs which forms an independent set. Uh, so, um, even before I go into something more. Uh, <coughs> vector space definition formally. So if you are more comfortable with vector spaces, think of them that I have a vector space and you are getting vectors with weights with it. Okay, and your goal is to select a linearly independent set of vectors. Yes. Yes. So cell and so individual bits are like for individual elements. So we have individual vectors on the vector. And of course, the goal is to maximize the weight of the set that we see. Uh, and we maximize the, the expected return by the best weight of the independent source. And let me just stop here for a couple of minutes. Is it is this definition clear? I mean, the rest of it will be trying to address this problem. This is a simple topic. Okay. How, 
what is the strategy to sell uh, select the set of vectors or elements such that uh, I want to select the, mm, the costliest set of um, of costliest independent set or independent set to move maximum uh, way. Yeah. Uh, okay. So think of the vector as a vector space. Okay. Your vector space and the width that vectors, individual vectors of the vector space and associated with data uh, cost function. Okay? The goal is to select a linearly independent set of vectors. So the independent set is a linearly independent set of vectors. So if I select V1 and V2, I will not be able to select V1 plus V2. Exactly. So they have to linearly independent. Do I components? Yes. Do I components put together? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes, but uh, how does it correspond to the original model if I have said two degrees of Mumbai or something like that? So this was in the Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, the method is like. Uh, yeah, the method is a bit more general in, in some of in the index cases. But in terms of the complexity of this particular problem, uh, this is fine. Yeah. So one could also think of this as the online minimum spanning to the yeah, 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 good. Uh, so, for people who are more familiar with, so there are, so let me give you an example. So, imagine that you are getting a graph. We have a graph. The edges of the graphs are coming on line fashion. Okay, each edge has a weight associated to it. And you can either select an edge or reject it, like this, like here. And the goal is to select a, a, a matching, the best matching. That's the matroid matroid segment. But the matroid is the graph matroid. No, 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 no. Just the weights, not the size weight of this. Yeah. So a particular age or a particular UI can have occurrences. But I will also take that VI which you have picked up. Is this is clear? Okay, so, uh, so let me tell you about what is known about this problem. Uh, so this problem was introduced by Baba Yo et al. in 2007. And uh, they gave a strategy of uh, 1 by log D. D is the dimension of the matroid, or the dimension of the vector space. Okay. And uh, for spatial, uh, I mean, already by 2008, there was a huge number of results on spatial structure. If you assume the matroid to have spatial structure, like the graph matroid and so on, you have some spatial algorithm. But for the general matroid problem, or the general vector space problem, there was no such, uh, no better, no better algorithm than log d. Okay. The conjecture which was there and is still there is that you should get a constant complete ratio. So like 1 over 4 in the case of the single car setting, so you should get some constant. So and, uh, in 2012, uh, this was a paper that I had with my co-author Lucky, Odin Lucky. So there we came up with a 1 over square root log d uh, competitive ratio. So from log d to 1 over square root log d. Uh, so, uh, so since then, there has been a collection of work that happened, or few works. So let's say in 2007 8, there was an order log d complete ratio. Okay, I, it should be 1 over log d, but I forgot this. So if you want log d complete ratio, then it will improve to square root log d. Then in 2014, uh, Odell Lucky proved the log log d complete ratio. And in 2015, uh, Moran, Fenster, and 
Jalkusan uh, came up with a similar competitive ratio but with a completely different idea. So in this rest of the uh, talk that I have, I will explain you, I will explain you the order log thing. I will also explain you the, uh, the main idea, the main trick used in this two results. And I will try to explain you uh, why this square will probably come. And um, I don't think I will have time and to talk a bit more of the log log B. So, but, uh, so um, for people who are actually interested in looking for problems, I believe that this is can be made constant. The techniques that are there here can be made constant. Uh, I must also apologize that both these papers are written in a very bad way. So reading them is very complicated. And that is also why one expects, I mean, I think not much progress has happened. Uh, only in the, only recent times I have started understanding our own algorithms properly. <laughs> <laughs> So I will do that. Uh, so you note that there are constant competitive ratio algorithms in almost all known patients. Okay, so, um, so let me just again rewrite this statement once again. Now I am writing it in the sense of the vector space. Okay, I think the vector space is a more comfortable notion for us. So let's leave with vector space. So you have a vector space of dimension D. And you have vectors coming v1 to vn, and with each vector you get an associated weight. Okay. Now notice these vectors are not. I'm not saying these vectors are of, um, all the vectors of vector space or something. Okay. There are some vectors maybe they are repeated, maybe some of them are not come. In fact, possibly that some of the span of it is not going to be Okay, and you take it in the online fashion and the goal is to select a set of independent S, the independent set of vectors and uh, the return is of course the, the sum of the weights of the vectors of the independent set that you have chosen and you also maximize the expected return by the weight of the All the 
bits of vectors can be anything in the real, in the real world. We will assume that they are something like opt. So let's also we know opt. Okay, so we know the maximum value that we want to uh, find or the target value. So you can imagine that all the weights are of this form. Either they are opt or opt over two or opt over four. And opt over two to the power log d. So anything lower than opt over two to the power log t has too small a weight to cause any problem to us. So you will not even consider that. Uh, yeah, actually, think of it for M to be off. Yeah. So, I mean, let's say, don't think of those things. It says that you, let's assume that you know that. I mean, you can also test them. Okay? So, uh, let's see here. I'll write down for any. So we can uh, bucket the set of all the vectors into certain buckets. Okay? So say B0 is the set of all uh, vectors i, okay, vi, such so that the weight of the vector vi is opt over uh, 2 to the power 0. Okay? And then again, similarly, Bi is the set of uh, Bj, set of all vectors whose weight is you know, so nice. Start to know, can you just raise the board? Uh, raise the screen, and you can just write on the board. I think I think that's good. I think that's good. I think I'm more done with the. Still on lost the case so, the first thing is very essential to get hold of the approximation of the DM. So, so this is the easy part. Okay. Now how much time do I have? Okay, so I will clearly not be able to go all that I hope for, but I will give you a, the, the most important uh, idea that happens for the next two uh, papers. Uh, yeah. So forget this multiple buckets. Just think of three buckets. Okay? There's one bucket, two bucket, and some third bucket. Okay? Now I have seen the first half of all of them. Say. Okay? Now a vector comes here. I want to I want to ensure that if this vector v, so if v is in the, this is called vj r, this is vj l, left and right, this is v1 i l and vj r, okay, and similarly here we have two things. My idea is that if a vector comes with, from a much lower bucket, and if this vector is in the span of B, J, R, okay, I don't want to pick G. So that's my goal, say, I uh, want to reject B. Note that I don't know B, J, R. B, J, R is a piece of off which is located. No, 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 it's a whole bucket. The, the part of the bucket that will come in the sample in the uh, selection sets. Okay, so, so I don't want to. Uh, so how do I? So just think about this part. Okay, if I have a vector and I want to just reject it. So natural first attempt can be that okay, if this vector is in the span of this, which I have seen. So if V is in the span of V J L, then reject V. So I guess that if V is spanned by V J L, you would like
like to believe that V is also spanned by Vjr or vice versa. If V is spanned by Vjr, it is also spanned by Vjn. But uh, note that this is wrong. It is not true. Just think of this Vj as all of them are linearly independent vectors. So they are adversarially told that they are all linearly independent. Okay? V is one of the elements which is in here. So this is not in the span of this. Doesn't mean that this is not in the span of this. But, so what can we do? So, now say here Vj, so, so let's say another possible case, okay? Say, if Vjn is the span of, so, so the, sorry, the dimension of Vj, uh, I don't know, span of Vjl intersection span of Vil is bigger than V. So this one and this one has a lot of things in common in this pattern. Okay. Then surprisingly, so not that certainly also possible. If V is in this no is in this span of this one or So instead of this statement, which is wrong, right? If I do this following thing, if V is in the span of V I L, then reject V. Okay. So what happens is that the dimension of V I L. Intersection span of BIL intersection span of BJL. This is actually similar to the intersection between these two. Dimension of span of BIL intersection span of BJR. So if this and this have lot of things in common. Then this and this also will have a lot of things in common. So if I say that if a vertex, if a your vector is in the span of this, and then I don't choose that, then I would have ensured that I would have able to pick some d number of points, vectors, linear linear vectors from here. So I'm um, out so, I, so of course I could not give you much of an idea about this thing, but uh, so, so this is actually one of the main idea that how do you want to protect a layer? I want to protect this layer from vector coming from lower down uh, so that that doesn't harm my angle return. And why this particular layer is unable to block this vector from being chosen? But if this layer has a lot of intersection with some other layer, then I can still protect this layer. So this is basically the main idea of both this result. Uh, so let me stop here now. In case you are interested in doing a bit more of this technical details, I will be happy to talk about it later. But uh, yeah. Any questions? All right, like you said, we can continue the discussion over the evening. That's fine.